Ready? We're ready to go, yeah? Right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is the briefing for the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America election observation mission to the 2019 parliamentary elections uh, held in Ukraine. We have a little background noise, but we're going to try to overcome it. Uh, on behalf of Deputy Mission Chief Tamara Oleksii, Vice President of the Ukrainian Congress Committee. Uh, we, uh, she extends her congratulations and thanks to all the observers. Uh, President Andrei Fute is in Kiev, uh, and he is uh, currently in some important meetings, but he also wishes to extend his gratitude and thanks to all the observers on the mission. And as chief long-term observer and trainer for the UCCA, I also would like to thank all the observers, both from the UCCA and from the World Ukrainian World Congress. Uh, both organizations participated in the mission, and we aggregated our data together in order to uh, maximize the impact of the volunteers and their capacity uh, in this election. At this time, I would like to read uh, the preliminary report uh, prepared by the UCCA regarding the 2019 Rado elections, which were just completed Sunday evening and tabulated Monday during the day and uh, into the night. UCCA's short-term observers were the primary resource for assessing the July 21st SNAP parliamentary elections. In, election, in its election observation methodology, which provides for a contribution by each observer, is designed to achieve an overall picture of Ukraine's election day proceedings. After reviewing UCCA's one-of-a-kind electronic questionnaire that provides an overall profile of polling station activity throughout the country and at diplomatic posts, we were able to draw conclusions based on our collective experience. In visiting over 150 polling stations on Election Day, UCA UCCA's election observation mission witnessed the following minor infractions. The in inability of a few pecs to open the polling station at 8 a.m as required by law, and in a few precincts, information displayed for the voters was not completely correct. And as reported in all of UCCA's previous election observation missions, physical access to the polling stations remains problematic. UCCA's observers noted that over 13% of the time, access to the polling stations was difficult. Thus, despite minor infractions reported, which were not systematic in nature, UCCA's 32 registered international election observers reported that the voting process was conducted in a peaceful and democratic manner that conformed to international democratic standards, rating the elections good to very good at the precinct level 93% of the time. Moreover, although only 49.84% of the electorate voiced their vote down considerably from the 62% of the electorate that cast their ballots during the re recent presidential elections, Ukraine's electorate has proven that they take their democratic civic duty seriously. And that is essentially the preliminary report issued by Tamara Alexei, Deputy Mission Chief, and Andrei Fute, Mission Chief, uh, on behalf of our mission. Um, this was the smallest of the three election ob observation missions that the UCCA has conducted this year. And again, I would like to extend my personal gratitude to all the observers who did participate. It's not easy being a true volunteer force that does not receive funding from any public organization to be able to get people to come out, travel to a distant country in the middle of July on their own funds, and still we had a fairly robust uh, mission. Collectively, the UCCA observation mission was able to uh, participate uh, by compiling 100 and over 150 observations uh, of both openings, polling stations, and of closings. Uh, I have personally had the opportunity to read almost all of those observations, and 
uh, we were able to glean significant information that contributed both to the preliminary report and will be included in the final report. At this time, what I'm going to do is do a statistical review of, of what our findings show. And I think it is interesting, uh, again, our database is not nearly what the database was for the presidential elections. We had way more observers. So consequently, we had more observations and the statistics are more meaningful when you have um, more than uh, a significant number of samples. But our samples are still uh, large enough that we are able to draw uh, some clear conclusions uh, about some things. Uh, as well, I would like to mention that our methodology is a methodology that meets world-class standards. We've been developing our methodology uh, since I started working with the UCCA uh, over, I don't know, 25 years ago. I think uh, my first observation mission with the UCCA was in 1996. And uh, in all of that time, uh, we've continued to get better and better. Uh, additionally, in country, there was the big boys, UCCA, uh, LMO, uh, the U.S. Embassy, a number of embassies uh, conducted uh, missions, and uh, there was a lot of activity uh, in the country. And with, without our observation missions, I'm, I'm convinced that in many of the former Soviet republics, as well as in uh, other countries that are not part of that far former Soviet experience, there would be a regression uh, in the march to democracy. So at this time, if uh, RTOM is ready, and I want to thank RTOM as well, because RTOM has been uh, the backbone of our technology piece, uh, I'd like to uh, put our statistical review uh, up for everyone to see. And uh, I think it, we, you will also be able to draw some interesting conclusions as a result. One moment. Never should have shut it down. <laughs> Maybe stand in front of it. While we're waiting for them to get the projector up, I will go over some of the statistics that I think are significant. Uh, first of all, I really need to encourage our observers to the greatest extent possible to participate in the training because the training does help you understand how to enter the data, how to enter it in a way that we can make use of it, and how to um, understand the common terminology that we're all using uh, so that we don't have confusion later on. For example, if people didn't enter the time in the 24-hour clock format, then we don't, we're not able to aggregate data based on time because some people put, use the English imperial system, AM or PM, and we're looking for a 24-hour clock, and then we can't really make a good scatter diagram to show exactly how many observations happened at what particular point in time. So that's important. Uh, second, to understand what, what each of those terms in our election observation form mean uh, that was also covered in the training, and that's important, too. 
And thirdly, um, I can't emphasize enough how much election observation is a team sport. Uh, election observation is really about you and your teammate and how well you together can maximize your efforts. Uh, again, we were a volunteer group. We understand that. So that's, that's cool. That's fine. But we still want to get the best out of everybody, and we want to have the biggest impact possible. Uh, and that's why concentration on the goals and objectives of the mission, the code of conduct, which I stressed in our briefing and when we, before we went, and the code of conduct drives the way we wish our observers to behave throughout the mission. Uh, violations of code of conduct are taken very seriously, and uh, we have had to discourage and disqualify observers in the past, and we don't like to have to do that, but it has happened, and it may happen again in the future. Are we about ready? And then maybe what you can do. I guess we can just discuss, discuss the results. And maybe we can get these lights off. It'll be easier to see. As you see, we had a total of 452 forms submitted. Now, this is a compilation of uh, the Ukrainian World Congress and the UCCA. Uh, for purposes of our debrief today, I'm going to aggregate out the Ukrainian World Congress uh, for most of our data, but I do want to point out a few things. Uh, for example, the first observation you're looking at, which is the last one that was entered uh, before we locked the form, uh, that's observation number 461. The team told us that their name was Ukrainian World Congress. Now, unless somebody really had a very strange way of naming their children, uh, that's not the name of the team. Uh, we were looking for last name, hyphen last name of each team member. So these are the kinds of things that are covered in the uh, training. And to the extent that we do this well, it means that the data is better and cleaner. And we're having to do less cleansing of the data in order to uh, make it understandable and uh, significant for us. So these are just a small example of the kinds of problems that we had. Um, I would also, at this point, like to go to polling data, if we could, Art Jim. And I just want you to get a, a picture from this. And I want you to look at our overall statistics. This is all 338 polling stations, both conducted by the UCCA and by the Ukrainian World Congress. Um, as you see, obviously, the World Congress had a greater number of observers, but that doesn't mean anybody's data is more or less significant, because we had enough samples on both teams. Uh, for the most part, uh, our observations were done uh, in urban areas. And we can go down through the form questions. Uh, we see that, in aggregate, 14.5% of our observers found physical access to the stations difficult. And as we noted in the preliminary report when I read it a few minutes ago, Access continues to be a big problem in this country, uh, not just for polling, but also for actually getting into public buildings in general. Uh, but it certainly is a, is a big problem for disabled or senior citizens or elderly people, uh, people not feeling particularly well. Scroll down, please, Art Jim. Uh, very few incidents of intimidation or agitation. Uh, I would like to pause on this for a minute. Uh, campaign posters and materials. Uh, in the briefing, we covered the fact that the words campaign posters and materials for terms of our observation applied to anything other than the official materials. So we still have an issue where I think uh, none of the observers and the teams uh, I talked to personally actually saw any political party material. But again, I think there's confusion on this question, and we're going to have to be more specific in the training and going forward. Uh, some minor incidents of campaign activity in the, in the stations. Scroll down. Uh, there was a lot of representation of uh, political parties, obviously, domestic observers, media representatives. 
And we do have 18% reporting security forces other than local police and fire as assigned. But once again, when I read through the forms, very few people were able to articulate what that meant. So I, I'm not sure, uh, because we have very little information on any kind of other security forces being around the country. Uh, every station had police people assigned, um, often man and woman, and also had a local safety official assigned. Uh, and again, maybe some of our observers did not understand this question clearly enough, and uh, we're going to have to look at that. Scroll down. Obviously, some overcrowding. Uh, some stations are way too small. Some incidents uh, of campaign inside the station. Scroll down. Uh, was the information displayed for the voters correct and complete? Again, some people found problems with that. Uh, the lower right-hand corner, ballot papers, documentation, signed, marked, and stamped. Again, we had a significant number of people saying that that was not correct, that the ballot papers were not prepared correctly. Yet, when I reviewed the forms, no one was able to articulate in writing what exactly that meant. So I have some questions about the validity of that information. Next. Uh, again, generally, these are all within norms. Next. Again, some, some issues were identified, other problems, and again, then we went to read the forms and find out what people put. Um, again, if it's not in writing, it doesn't exist. It's like anything else. Uh, in legal terminology, I can't use data that people verbally com you know, communicate because it's, it's going to be lost into space. So unless it was written in the forms, uh, we can't really use the information. Next. And last but not least, uh, I want to look at the totals, and our total for the entire group is 63% rating good, 32% very good, which gives us a 95% very good or good. Uh, this is the aggregate total for everyone. At, and again, measured to the presidential, it's slightly different, but I wanted you to see this uh, because I now want to take the UCCA's observations and look at them separately. So if we can go back to the data, Artem. Hello. Glad to see you here. And uh, we're also preparing for the people that are online and for the people who want to uh, see the briefing at their leisure. Uh, I, I wanted to go through the whole thing, but right now we're going to go back to openings. openings. Yeah, we'll start with openings. Uh, and before you go, um, uh, I want to go to UCCA. I know the number of people who came as volunteers uh, did exit the country already or went off to see family or went to go see friends, and that's understandable. So that's why we're putting the debrief online. So this is the UCCA. This is just us. Uh, these are the people we've had the greatest opportunity to have contact with. This is the group that we've had the best ability to train uh, because we've had them here or they've worked with us before uh, or they've had uh, the opportunity to view the training online. And you see we did 100% urban stations, at least that's what people reported. Uh, again, we were reporting close to 12% difficulty of access to the station. So it's fairly consistent with the overall total. Next. Uh, very little and nothing in terms of intimidation of voters. This is the opening, no general agitation. Uh, again, the question of campaign posters and materials. I have not spoken with anybody, and nobody wrote anything in the forums that really said they saw political party material. So maybe i got to change this question and have it say something more explicit about political parties. Uh, next. There was definitely candidate representation, domestic observers. Uh, and here again, I'm concerned about this 35% that indicate there were security forces because no one can tell me they saw them, actually. So they reported them. Uh, and again, maybe they didn't read the form carefully. 
Maybe it's a mistake, but we're going to have to work on this. Next. Overcrowding is a problem. That's certainly an issue in the, in the uh, process of voting in Ukraine. Next. Even with the lower turnout. Again, some people reporting problems with the ballots and with the secrecy of the booth. Uh, some of the commentary regarding booth secrecy was that the curtain material, which was new, first time they've ever used that material, that's one of the, new, the only new things they had, uh, it was somewhat, you were able to see somewhat through it uh, if the light was behind it. So you, you could get a silhouette or some, some, per, you know, some view of the voter. Um, I'm not sure that it, that it wasn't a secret situation. One of the realities, and, and again uh, indicated in the documentation, was that voters themselves had a hard time navigating the ballot papers. Uh, voters were taking ballot papers and then they were walking uh, through the polling station trying to look at this ballot paper and find that person's name and read the, the public uh, information that was, you know, offered by everybody. And, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the realities of this election. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of the other conclusions in a, in a little bit. Go ahead, Artyom. Uh, the PECs uh, ha all had quorums. However, again, in many cases, some members of the PECs that were assigned never showed up, uh, simply wouldn't take their oath of office and refused to participate. But I don't have any incidents where there was no, no quorum formed. Uh, some incidents were the seal, the, saying the ballot papers were not sealed. Uh, again, um, no photographic evidence has been given to me, and no written evidence has been given to me. So I'm not sure why, what this information means. Next. Uh, other problems, some, some, some specific issues, but none of our stations reported a bad opening. Uh, in my own experience, and in the experience of the Odessa team, those that I had the opportunity to debrief uh, on Monday morning, uh, we basically all agreed that although we had a number of new people, uh, that the PECs basically uh, did their job, they got it done uh, one way or another, and uh, basically the intent of a fair, free, and transparent election was conducted. We can't have two people speaking at once. So this was our opening. Let's look at the polling stations. Yeah, just UCC at this point. So again, when we aggregate out UCCA, we did 94 observations. And uh, if you caught a quick glance of, of who did that, I do want to point out that uh, Yuri Harilishin was able to do 17 observations uh, himself and a volunteer. Easy, boy, easy. Easy. Uh, himself and a volunteer uh, on our Odessa team. He did 17 observations total, including an opening and a closing. So a fairly heroic effort. Uh, we were able to put four teams in the field in Odessa with the use of uh, some friends and volunteers of mine, uh, combined with the official um, observers. So we were able to cover a significant amount of territory. Um, mostly urban stations, again, this is a little bit in conflict with what our overall data showed, because we do have a rural entry, but they didn't report it originally. So it's kind of hard to understand. Physical access to the station for polling stations, we're reporting almost 14% difficulty, and I think that's fairly accurate. Next. Uh, there were some disturbances. There was some general agitation. Uh, we do have good information on some of those disturbances, and we don't have uh, information on others. Uh, one of the realities, and we'll talk about this in our overall conclusions, is the PECs were completely reorganized since the last election, uh, for, for obvious reasons, and the DECs as well. So there was a lot of inexperience, which was, was a plus on one side and a minus on another side. So some of that resulted in some tension at the polling stations, uh, where maybe people were struggling to figure out exactly what to do. 
and it was more of a problem in closing, so we'll talk about that a little bit more. Again, the question about posters and materials, I do have questions about that. Next. Uh, representatives, observers, and again, a very high number for the security forces. Maybe people think it's, they should answer yes, where are their security forces? But it says other than local police and fire, so I don't know, I've got to work with people on this one. <laughs> because I, 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 I just don't have any verbal, video, photographic, or written confirmation that there were 27% of the polling stations having some kind of strange people, malicious. What we're looking for is the kind of problems we had here years ago when thugs and gangs and men in black suits and you know, marauded through the polling stations and basically took control of them. And that's the kind of thing we're looking for here. We haven't had that in a, quite a while. Uh, we haven't even had that going back to the, to the elections with Yanukovych, frankly. So uh, we got to look at this more closely. Next. Uh, same thing with the campaign materials. Overcrowding, though, we do have some good evidence of. Next. Uh, some questions with registration, obviously. Again, some questions, issues about uh, documentation. There's always some problems with identification. You, 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 you altered your appearance since I saw you last. You get the beard was not nearly as uh, pronounced. Yeah. Next. Yeah, yeah. Next. Booth secrecy, same, same issue we discussed before. More than one person in a booth at once. The only time I saw that was parents and children or uh, elderly people who do have the right to get assistance. But again, very few. No, nothing that would significantly alter the voting experience. Next. Uh, questions about seals. Uh, again, there were the use of paper seals in some cases because they didn't have the plastic uh, ones that automatically lock. Paper seals were permitted. It is legal. Uh, so that needs to be looked at. And again, other problems, and people identified them. And I'll talk to you about some of them as I get to the written comments. I, I will tell you, uh, in one, we did have two cases in Odessa. Uh, I was one of them where the police asked to photograph my credential. Uh, which I politely explained to them he had no reason to do that and that all the information on the credential would be written in the book. And all he had to do was go take a picture of that if he wished. But he had no reason to take a picture of my credential or my booth or my, my passport. Uh, and then he tried to make me feel bad because his boss would be angry at him if he didn't produce these photos. And I said, well, then tell your boss to come down and discuss it with me. And then that was the end of the conversation. We didn't have to discuss it further. Uh, but again, here for, for voting, uh, we're reporting 58.5%. Is that correct? And 35. So that's 80. Ninety-three percent. Yes, that's what I had. And we're reporting ninety-three percent good or very good. This is significantly down, uh, at least statistically significantly down from the March uh, situation. In March, we were over ninety-six percent good, and I think this is reflective of those kinds of other problems that we discussed: uh, PECs being new, um, decks being new. Clearly, uh, on Saturday, at least in Odessa, I visited four of the decks and some of the PECs. They were much further behind in organizing than they were in March. Granted, I don't think anybody was very enthusiastic about having an election in the middle of July. I don't think the decks were enthusiastic about it. I don't think PEC members were enthusiastic about it. So that may have contributed to some of the, of the lack of organization, and I think it's reflected in what would some people used as a bad uh, rating for a polling station in this case. That's my conclusion from reading all of these reports. I was able to read most of them because there aren't that many compared to uh, March. Um, what's next? Closing, yeah. 
And of course, closing, which is the name of the game, because as a famous, yes, for UCCA, as a famous leader of the former Soviet Union said, it's not important, so much important who votes, it's important who counts them. So we put particular emphasis uh, on our UCCA observers and again, you see we don't have that many, and it's hard to ask volunteers to do what they're supposed to do, I mean, to follow through. That's, it's tough. Um, you know, when I work with OSCE, you're captured. You're, you're on stipend, and you're captured, and you're gonna do it this particular way, and that's it, and there's no way around it. It's tough with volunteers, but still, the, the closing is very important, and um, it was a tough closing, I think, across the country. It was not easy. Uh, they were two long ballots. There were two big elections. Uh, the only thing I think that saved them was the low turnout. Uh, and in Odessa, the turnout was down in, into the th low 30s. Yeah, because otherwise, you, a polling station of 2,000, we, we might still be counting. Uh, but they did get it done. And then that's basically uh, what our results show. Uh, scroll down a little bit. Thank you, I may need that. Um, the question about camp home posters and materials. I, I'm absolutely certain people are not exactly focused on what that means. I'm gonna have to fix this question or eliminate it or something, or we're gonna have to do something with it. Next. Uh, there are plenty of observers. Again, this question about security forces. Um, we do have one incident where we do have one case where a polling station, there was an attempt to get into a polling station at one o'clock in the morning. People were banging on the doors. They were obviously, they said they were from a TV channel. Uh, I have this video taken by an observer. Obviously there was not a TV channel banging on the door at one o'clock in the morning trying to get in the polling station. But that's the only incident that we have that I can attribute to that. But again, with this few observations, uh, it makes a big jump. Next. Unauthorized people. Um, again, not much, not much in writing about this, so I can't tell you how, how real it was. Um, campaign in the station, no, but there's campaign material. Maybe somebody, I don't know. Next. Were there voters waiting to vote outside the polling station at 2000? I have one observation that says there were no voters waiting outside, and no voters waiting inside. And in the next question, were those eight people able to vote? I got yes and yes. So again, paying attention to the uh, yeah, in a dialogue box, yeah, yeah, but obviously there would be no. The answer would be if there was nobody waiting, then the answer should be no. But we'll look at that. That's a good point. What I really want to make sure, one, one thing I to make a note of, is uh, in the form in the future, if people don't enter the numerical information, <laughs> they shouldn't be able to submit the form because in some cases, I don't. Yeah, only to fix, yeah. Good. Next. Um, proper steps. Seals, some questions on seals. Control sheets, none, that's very good. That's really crucial, you know, that's a crucial question if the control sheets are there or not. That's another way that things used to get out of hand here. Um, this huge number for indication of ballot box stuffing, I mean, ballot box stuffing is pretty easy to find. And it, it means that you have a whole clump of, of ballots that look the same. So, again, unless that's, you know, you have some evidence, it's very, very tough to, to think that that's a correct call there. Was it the choice of every ballot announced aloud? 100%, but there was ballot box stuffing. I'm not sure how that works. Were you allowed to observe closely? Yes. Was the validity of contested ballots determined reasonably? Yes. This is all very good. Next. Next argument. And did the PECs have difficulty filling in the protocols? Obviously they do. Um, it's, a, you know, where, where the, the no number being this high is actually significant. Um, Ukraine requires that the PECs be done by hand. 
And there's a good reason, as we all know. This is where the problems were in the years gone by. Um, one of the biggest positives in the election system here now is that if, if as an observer you have protocols, and if you have them, I'll take them today, uh, you now have the ability to look at that protocol visually on the Central Election Commission website. So if you can, as long as, as long as that protocol you have in your hand and that protocol on the CEC site are the same, it's very, very difficult for there to be any kind of real manipulation at a level above the, P, the PEC, which is where all the trouble used to be. The problem wasn't so much in the PECs before, it was a, the next level up where the administrative resources were effective. Was able, everybody able to get a protocol? We do have some issues we wanted to discuss there. And in general, what was the uh, conduct of the polling station in this point? And for closings, again, with only 15 observations, we were only giving a 74% good or very good uh, in this election. And I, th this is, um, yeah, 84, I'm sorry. This is a significant uh, step back. Again, not such a big sample, but it's still a significant step back. And I would like to review with you, I'll give you a summary of what the uh, written comments in the report tell us. And then I'll listen to what you have to say. This is, this is a summary of, besides the data itself, uh, the written comments. Again, I want to preface this one more time by saying, although our mission was smaller than the last two missions this year, uh, I think we're lucky we had any people show up, actually. Um, again, our observers get a rating of good to very good at 93%, which is a 3% drop from the presidential. Uh, I think the mission views this as still being an A, but maybe an A minus, but still fair, free, and transparent. I mean, you, you missed the beginning. I did read the preliminary report, which is basically says that we think it was fair, free, and democratic. Um, the inexperience of the PECs uh, being the main reason for some of the ratings that we're looking at, and also all new PEC members and DEC members did create some inefficiency and some disorganization that may not have been there. They were much more prepared in March. And of course, nobody was ready for this election. This, was, this is a snap election. Uh, on the other side, it's very encouraging uh, to see so many young people at the, participating at the PECs. Uh, the question, I, it really is, it's very encouraging. Um, at, in, in the PEC that I closed at, where we had over 2,000 voters uh, on the rolls, <laughs> thankfully it didn't show up. I mean, we'd, we'd still be there. Um, if this had been an all adult PEC that I've been used to in the past, by about one o'clock in the morning, they've been ready to kill each other. And the adults in the room were really stressed at about one o'clock. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the PEC voted to expel a, a, NGO, a, a political party observer because she kept telling them to hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And what they were doing was they kept going back to the computer and reading. Just going, they wanted to make sure that they did it right. Now, the young people in that PEC, they were just having a good time. They, they still had good humor, they still had energy, and they were still laughing. But in my, in my previous experience, if it had been the same pet, same time of night at the same level of organization with adults, they would have been ready to kill each other. So it's very encouraging to see these young people. The question is, uh, will they come back? I don't know if they will continue to participate because they found that it's not you know, so pleasant at when you've been doing it from six o'clock in the morning and then uh, it's uh, three o'clock in the, in the morning of the next day and you're still not done. Uh, according to our reports and handwritten things, there were some disruptions and, and disturbances. Uh, people do suspect. We do have people who think games were being played. Um, and I have no doubt that, especially with the single mandate districts, things were very serious. That's where it started to get personal. Uh, with the presidential before, people didn't really have a lot of skin in the game. It was some other people that had the skin in the game. Uh, with the political parties, it is what it is. 
But then when you get down to the single mandate, it's somebody's ability to control something. And uh, there, I think there was, if, if anything, there was attempts to use all the tools. But again, nothing that we can say affected the outcome. Uh, one of the recommendations we will make is that the PECs get additional training. But you saw from the fact that some PEC members didn't even show up, it's hard to train somebody that's not there. I can, I can attest to that. You can't train people that aren't there and, and don't participate. So that, that makes that a little bit of a problem, too. Uh, I will say my experiences in Georgia is that they have solved this problem. Georgia put a lot of efforts into making sure their PECs were trained. And uh, you know, I, I, they, their, their training is rather arduous. If you're going to be on a PEC, you're getting trained for like almost a month. And you've got videos, and you've got how to do this next, and that kind of thing. So they put a lot of effort into it. And I can tell you from my own work there that they've been successful. Accessibility is still a big issue. That's been in all of our reports. Um, again, we would like to look more closely at our training and fix some of these questions with the dialogue box and things like that. Uh, there was, in the written reports, obviously, some indications of, of tension in the polling stations. And again, when people get down to the local mandate, there's skin in the game. Uh, other comments, obviously, holding an election in the middle of July uh, in Ukraine does create problems. It does suppress voter turnout. Uh, people travel. And if you're not at your place of registration, you can't vote. Um, and in Odessa, it was really down. Um, it was down below the countrywide level because I, people are working. That's when they make their money. They, maybe, they didn't take time off to go vote or they didn't couldn't go vote or they're working somewhere else. Um, and when voter turnout decreases, also creates the opportunity for people not to have as much confidence in the election. I thought in March we were very encouraged that people felt confident in the election because they came out in big numbers and they weren't so, so much there. Again, these elections, though, were pretty cut and dried. Um, again, the report form was stable throughout the day. Everybody was able to use it. Uh, we do have to have uh, some, some work. We still need to do some work with it. Uh, RTM and I have talked about it a lot. And uh, we had plans to do much more with it than we did. Uh, but we didn't plan for an election in July either. So uh, some of the things we wanted to do, uh, we'll try to have them ready maybe for the municipal elections in October. It's possible we may have a mission. I don't know. That's another question. To, but, Leave that for another day. Uh, that's the report. Um, any questions, comments? Were we supposed to send two people twice, once for, one for each uh, election? Uh, well, for the recording. Send, yeah. Were we supposed to send two reports every time? Because we only sent one because of the single mandate and the party. No, no you want one report. OK, because that made a, a difference in some of the questions. Yeah. Uh, remember, we're observing the process. We're not observing any of the particular particulars of the elections themselves. And to me, you know, it was amusing to watch who was winning, because there's nothing else to watch at that hour. <laughs> the other shows are off the air. but. Uh, no, one report was sufficient. Just how were they doing what they did? Just the numbers. Just, and the numbers. In some cases, the numbers would have been different had the party until writing about the single mandate or the party. They should have been different. I mean, I think in almost every case they were different. Sure. Yeah, should. I mean, some people don't vote in both elections. Yeah. yeah. Some people are only interested in this, some people are only interested in that. Uh, oh, I will say this also from the handwritten forms, and I should put it in my notes. There were way more spoiled ballots in the single mandate election than there were in the national election. This is where people know this candidate, or all of them, <laughs> and didn't like any of them. Because we had Darth Vader uh, again, and uh, very many cases of people with the same name with very similar job titles, uh, which is a good technique to try to siphon votes. I'm not sure it worked. Good point. I have a yes on. Yeah, I have a couple of comments. I think we need in the report uh, in our recommendations. I think we need to comment 
on the need to reform their uh, electoral procedure. The whole, the whole process is a legacy of the Soviet system, which is um, designed to be uh, mindlessly complex for a reason. To, uh, so there is absolutely no reason for people to be in this, I'm talking about the commission members, to be in, uh, in, this, in, in this situation where they go through what I consider to be mental and physical abuse. Because by the time the polls are closed and people start working on protocols, they already spent 18 hours uh, at the polls, preparing and then, and, and then uh, working the polls. Then uh, they cannot leave the, um, the polling station. Um, they are paid per diem, and therefore, most of the, a lot of the commission members, you know, depend on this 200 hryvnia to um, uh, to do this work. And so, all commission to a T goes over midnight. At the polling station where I was, they had 15 votes for the parties and one vote for the single mandate. It took him five minutes to count those. It took him six hours to finish the protocols. By that time, they were exhausted. They were irritable. They had personal problems. And uh, when I, once I got my protocol, they were still working on it. So, so the, whole, the whole, in my view, the whole system is just not, uh, you know, it, it's not conducive to, uh, to uh, you know, normal elections. They have, they have to definitely reform that. This thing of writing things by hand while everybody's sitting around and, and plays on their iPhones is just, is just a theater of the absurd. Um, so that's, the, that's, 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 that's one. That, uh, the other one is that a lot of, a lot of uh, electoral abuse and intimidation happens before the elections. So this is more recommendation to the, to the observers is that it's imperative to talk to local activists and understand the lay of the land. So for example, in Odessa, the reason there were many um, young people on the commissions is that because they were intimidated to, to get on it um, because the, the main candidate, the current, um, the current parliamentarian who's been there for 20 years is also the uh, president of the, uh, of the university, of the jurisprudence university. Um, and when the election was announced, he changed the final exams from May to July. And so all the students were forced to stay in, uh, uh, in Odessa, and a lot of them were intimidated in being on the commissions. So we talked to some, and they're scared. You know, they're like 19, 20-year-olds. I mean, there are some good ones, but there are some who just... So I think, I, I think, I think understanding the lay of the land is, 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 is also very important. Well, two points I'll make that, thank you for your comments. Uh, first of all, we do work closely with APURA and the Committee for Concerned Democracy. Uh, we work with their local uh, teams and uh, that's part of really the task that our core team does. We do try to get the lay of the land, but again, when we're doing the actual mission, we have to concentrate on what you see at that particular time. And. Um, Obviously, there are things like you're describing that happen. I, I want to go back to the thing about the protocols. I do, I do think they are very tedious. There's no doubt about that. I cannot dispute that. But um, the, the problems that have been caused here in the past really revolved around the protocols. That's, there's the reason they kept that that way. It's because the protocols before <laughs> were very easily altered. And now they, that's why they had that put this law in place that they had to be done by hand and only after the polls closed and only after the votes were counted. That's the correct procedure. That's why they did it. Now, can they do a better way? I think they can. I think I, I've seen other places, again, I'll use Georgia as an example, where they prepare three official protocols. Everybody agrees that those three are correct. And then there's a Xerox machine, an actual Xerox machine uh, official. <laughs> delivered to each polling station, and everybody gets a Xerox copy, and then they wet stamp it. Here, a copy of a protocol is not valid. So there are elements of the election law that have not been changed, or have been changed for a reason. Basically, the election law we're operating under is the same one that's existed since 2015. So only the reforms that came after the Orange Revolution really have been incorporated 
And those kinds of comments will be included in the final report. There's no doubt about that. Um, using administrative resources, like what the rector did with the kids, it didn't really work, obviously. It didn't work for the guy, so um, didn't work. This time, at least in the case we were looking at. But uh, those things, I mean, again, I've been involved in a lot of elections in the states, and we use all of our administrative resources to the maximum, so to the best I could. Any other comments? I mean, you always have something good to say. Um, well, this time, uh, we split up a bit. So on the first part of the day, I was on my own. Where were you? I was mostly in uh, Pochersk uh, and in Holosivka. In Kiev. Ah, in, in Kiev. Kiev, right. Yeah. Kiev. Uh, no, the city, the center. So the beginning, I would say, um, I st uh, start out some pretty central places and there were a lot of observers. Everything was very nice there. Um, based on the fact that my first experience were in Dnipro and the village around there, <laughs> it was a pretty big difference. Big difference, yeah. yeah professionalism and organization and so forth. Um, but then I started to go further and further out. Um, but overall, it was still pretty good, high standards. Um, one thing that Darka recommended that I didn't realize till later was a really good idea is to ask uh, for each, uh, each polling station. I really like this idea. <laughs> ask each polling station for them to uh, email their protocols to you um, at the end of the day or at the night so that even though you're not able to observe or close at like many, many different places, you still get a, a copy of the protocol, which I think is really <laughs> a really neat idea. You can make your comments later. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, especially with applications like WhatsApp, you could take a photo of it and send it in to us. Yeah and, that, yeah. and that would be a good way for us to have all of those protocols. Mm. Because why we ask you to bring us protocols is, is just for the same... Come get him. You can take a photo later. The same reason you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, in, I th maybe Vika or Ira remember. Larissa? Larissa. Larissa. Vika or Ira may remember. What was the year that the UCCA copy of the protocol was used as a, 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 a witness fact? 2014? Take care. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 2004. 2004. Quite a while ago. Um, Go ahead, continue. Okay, um, and there's another point. Oh, about the actual experience of um, recording all the observations. Um, overall, it worked pretty well. Um, issues with trying to send everything because you had to find Wi Fi and so forth. So I hooked it up with um, Allison from the States was here and she had like her phone plan so we were able to do that but on the in the process of sending it I think one of the forms might have um, got lost in the space of you know, yeah. the internet so we can so, check yeah um, because it's nice to know that all the hard work and observations absolutely get a read I'd have some uh, wrote some comments most of them were pretty minor issues just to let you know um, there was one unauthorized person who was pretty random in a central point station I wrote about. Uh, but overall, things went pretty well. An issue was, or not an issue, but a, a difference um, in experience was that there were many fewer questions this time than the presidential election. So it did go by more quickly. But I wondered if some important information was not included. So I included in the comment section of each one just the number of uh, ballots that were received, so it can be cross-referenced with how many uh, registered voters are there, which I think is an interesting uh, two numbers to have, you know, set aside each other to see. You think we should add that to the form? I think so. I think it was worth it because then, like, there were, this time it wasn't so, much, so big of a deal because they were pretty close, usually the ones that I asked at, but in Nipro, on the previous elections, there were sometimes, like, a huge difference, and it was just <laughs> interesting. I, 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 we'll, we'll take that into consideration. I mean, it's a valid point. It's, it is an important fact. Yeah. I, I agree with you on that. There's no doubt about that. Um, 
because the, overall, and they are saying this time, there are sometimes when they receive fewer ballots than there are people to vote because they realize like not even 50% are going to show up anyway. But in Dnipro, there are some instances where there were like many, many, many more ballots than there were even potential voters. So, And in our case, when they were cutting them, uh, their, their kindergarten scissors that they had been provided failed uh. and they had to do it by hand, which is, you know, really tedious. <laughs> Uh, the, the reason why we don't have that, don't have that question is because you see we're, we have peop, people are really having trouble dealing with what we're giving them. Oh, our too observers. many questions already. Because if they, that's the kind of question you need to come for training. Because I need really people to understand how many registered voters, how many ballot papers. Right. Yes, it's important information. Again, with OSCE, we have a questionnaire that's 127 questions for a polling station. Right. But he got it captured person. Right. They, they, they agreed to do this for a stipend and they're, they got to do it. They get more support and shifts and everything. So it's a bit more manageable. Right. Uh, we were, you know, working like what, 25, 26 hours. So right. it's a, a yeah. And, and you're only, we American. don't have a team to come replace you. Right. Yeah. You know, so. Went at three o'clock in the morning or to intervene, to give like you four a significant five and six. <laughs> right. Right. What but, time um, did you finish? Um, we left what time? Right, five, yeah, five thirty, even five, five thirty, yeah. But yeah, we couldn't have actually find one of the Oveka. Yeah, we couldn't find it, and we like looked all over the street, the address, and the taxi driver was getting pretty frustrated. We just like got out at a certain point because he was not happy. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. It was really odd because there should have been many, many cars in the vicinity, but there was nothing. Um, so, yeah, and there was, I don't know, maybe, you, I don't know what happened. But one issue, or one uh, question that also Darka suggests I recommend, or I ask, recommend that I ask of uh, the different stations that I did ask was about the seal and the envelopes for the protocols and ask where they are, what's the procedure, just to confirm with them, what are they planning to do with it, who's holding on to it, where they, it's locked up or whatever. Um, so again, you can't verify throughout the whole, at the end of the day, did the stations you visit follow their procedures that they stated, but you can at least ask, ask which lets them know, you know, you're, you're, that you that you know this should be done. Right. Yeah, it's a very good technique. So I that's, did. That's a technique that you well. get with experience. I added that as well, but I didn't write down um, anything unless I noticed something off. So the ones I asked, again, because they were in Gave and pretty central districts, um, they knew the procedure and they were doing a pretty good job of having everything, you know, under lock and key and so forth. So that was good. One police officer did question my um, ID badge because he said he uh -huh. wanted me to turn it over and he said that I think I wrote it down in comments that the backside was just blank and it should have had like some extra information because the, all the other exactly and I was like this is what I was given so I don't know what the other observer badges have on them but um, but that was the only instant, uh, instance that some someone questioned the badge it was a bit odd yeah, again I had an officer wanted to photograph mine I just, yeah, at the end, one of them, at the closing stations, one of them um, wanted to photograph and everything. He told me uh, he wanted to um, eliminate the opportunity for provocation. I said, you're actually creating one. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you're provoking me. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you're causing everybody to turn around, and why are we having a long discussion? Yeah. And now, I'm, uh, now I want to know why you're here. Why are you inside here, first of all? <laughs> Well, you're not they, supposed to be inside they here. They get pretty bored too. But then I realized why, because they were having a disturbance. Yeah. They were having a disturbance. They, they had some, some disturbed voters. But we closed at a place that had three different polling stations in the same building, um, which was interesting because you could walk between the different polling stations quite easily so you could track the progress. Did you, did you close all three of them? We did send a form for all three, yeah. So that was good. Before Ira leaves, I want to thank Ira. Thank you for all your work and help. Our local staff. Mm -hmm. 
So that was a good idea as well, getting some of the triple places down, um, because then you can see more polling stations with. Yeah, with that, less that, that, that's the spirit of our mission, right? Yeah. To try to do as much as we can, not as little as we can. Well, in the future, if I had to do it in Cave again, I would probably just go straight to like some far off region, far off neighborhood, and just walk around there as much as possible. But because uh, you get more interesting situations, like I said, in the center, um, the chairs can hold a Sivka. Like the area toward Vladimir's goes pretty well run. Yeah, if, if if we had more people, we could have more. Yeah. But we we exactly for what what we had, I think we got the picture, mm -hmm. and it's important that they know we're here. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments? I want to again thank our local staff, uh, Vika. Thank you for everything. On behalf of the entire mission, we appreciate it, Larissa, for all your help with organizing. RTO for all his help on organizing. Now you can get your photo if you want, if you're quick. Remo for, for being a good observer. Remo was a good observer. And we look forward to seeing RTO, obviously. Thank you for all the work on the forum and listening to the comments, and we'll try to make some changes if we, if we can, when we can. In the meantime, we should do some of our real work, the work that we get paid for. So once again, on behalf of can I, uh, can Andre... I, can I report? Yes, yes. <laughs> May I report? Yeah. I'm sorry, I thought you did. I apologize. Okay. Okay. Uh, we, we called our team CODA. <laughs> because it was the first uh, letter of our initial of our name, Charlene, Alexander, Darker, and Alison. Um, and I asked them before they left to, to write Speak into me, the microphone. To, to write what they, their thoughts. So we'll start with Charlene. Uh, this was my fifth election of involvement in the process. I had a different perspective this year as the mother of a new observer and a member of the press. Although this election was off cycle, it didn't seem to affect the process. From what I saw, elections were run comparably to those I've observed in the past, and this was good to see. As a mother, it was exciting for me to see my daughter's interest in the election process and enthusiasm for a free and fair democracy. So she joined us. Um, she didn't open or close, but she joined Alexander when she could. Uh, she didn't get a, a pass from accreditation from the central election, but she got a press pass. So that's the reason why, because we had a member who just didn't show, Christine. Yeah, so, so we didn't know. Um, so that's how we came out of that. Uh, Alexander has reported already. Uh, and when um, I was planning the um, our, our part, we took the right bank and that was uh, Podil, Pechersk, and Holosivsky. <laughs> so uh, me and Alison started in Podil, and as you were saying before, they were very strangely um, distributed. Uh, the, it was a very, very long, thin, very distant uh, 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 deck, and the deck was way out. So. Uh, we didn't we didn't need, uh, attempt to go there because we had another two that we could have followed so once we've done we did about nine um, pecs we took a break and we all joined for lunch to plan the, the second half um, and when we saw that the uh, decks were close to the ke the central election committee committee uh, particularly Pechersk and Holosivsky, then we we picked a, a triple, and we all went to, to see that. Um, but as Alexander said, uh, it was impossible to, to find that well, it wasn't impossible, but we just gave up <laughs> trying to look for the deck. Uh, the, the, the address that was given was an actual residential building. Um, but really? Yes. Um, and uh, the, 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 on the forms we gave you on the. Yep, the, the, on the forms that we had, the, the address of the deck for Pechersk was a residential building, 38B. So, that, uh, and we tried, we tried, uh, we thought maybe it's, uh, you know, it's narrow. We tried th 3B, 38, we, all the permutations. Uh, there was a, a, um, a polling station on that road, but it was just a polling station. 
Um, normally you can tell them a mile away, the, the deck's a mile away, because there are t cars bringing all the materials in, yeah, yeah. and there was nothing of the sort anywhere near in that, in that area. So um, that was a... What deck? A Pachersk deck. 221? 211? 221? 221. Can you look on the CEC site and see what was the address for deck 221? Kiev. 221. It may have been 221 or 211, I, I can't remember. Okay, so, uh, and this is Alison's report. Uh, this is Charlene's daughter, uh -huh. who was with me. Uh -huh. During this election, observer mission, we visited 13 polling stations, completing a total of 15 observations. This was my first ever observer mission, and I learned a lot and enjoyed it thoroughly. All of the pro uh, places we visited were going by the book, which was wonderful to see. And when the elections are free and fair and transparent, it's a good day for democracy. The major thing I noticed was that many of the polling stations were not accessible. Uh, she means for disabled. Right. Um, perhaps this is the mitigated by the mobile voter boxes, but I still saw many people struggling to enter the building to vote. There is always room for improvement, and I think this could be an area to focus on. Overall, I had a wonderful experience and hope to return in five years for the next elections. Maybe sooner. <laughs> Maybe sooner in October. Yeah, um, you never know. But she, um, yeah, she was very surprised. And, um, and she brought up a very good point about, about the form, which she didn't mention in her report, which was the, the question about when you leave the polling station should be right at the end, the time that, uh, uh, that we left. There, there would have been, rather than scrolling up and... That's and a good that. comment, Artyom. That's a good comment. The time of leaving the peck should be at the bottom of the form, rather than scrolling up and... The two. Yeah, otherwise you've got to go back and find it, right? Especially if you're using mobile. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and during training, because when, when you're writing the numbers, you're, and, and they're different between the, between the two ballots, uh, then that, that's something that, that, that needs to be covered, because you could, could have put either or number. It wasn't specific which, for which. So that's... Uh, right, and, right, right, right. So, yeah. I mean, the spoilage rate was very, very low. And uh, we had more spoilage in the single mandate. So, um, like I said, the triple, uh, we managed to get all three because they were bet doing better or worse. Uh, we registered at all three and that's why they, we were able to get all, all of them, and they differed. In some of them, we had a, a wet stamp. On um, others, we had a, a copy, a, a copy, and then a wet stamp, and, and on another one, we just had a copy. Without nothing, with no, with no So, yeah, so you, you've got a whole gamut uh, there yeah. uh, to look at. And as uh, Alexander said, I did ask, and they are coming in, the, the, when we asked, just send me, uh, something that you, you have in your hand, and I've got about three or four that, will, that I'll send you. Okay. But be, there are pictures, I don't have the hard copy. That's fine. It's just, to me, it's a good process. Yeah. I think in this age, that also would be evidence of something needed to be done. Uh, the young lady's comments on the, on the absentee mobile box, obviously the mobile box does not make up for the fact that this accessibility issue exists. It, Right. This is the central district, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Where she would like to look to leave the police station and talk about it. So she saw me and she's asking, oh, can I help You know, for, for a lot of people, uh, this is a day out. Yeah. It's a reason to get dressed up and come out on a Sunday. And they, they don't want to sit and, you know, be declared infirm if they're not. But on the other hand, they don't want to be uh, feeling like uh, Edmund Hillary trying to climb up to the to the polling station. So I, I, I think it's an issue that really needs to be addressed. Um, we'll send you pictures and stuff because, yeah, like yeah. I said, we were, we're just waiting for things to come in finally you, to, you, you, to do it. But, but there, as you were saying, there were people taking the ballots, uh, going to the posters. Uh, so when it was processed, when we were timing the process, how long it took for some people, it, it could sort of some were like five minutes and others were like wandering and were making up their mind then and there. There was, there was also an hour response to that question. Uh, 
um, just how the question of how long are people voting for? Because for their team, they were stealing five minutes or so because they were counting from the moment they stepped in to the moment they stepped out. So yeah, there was a process when a lot of people were outside the polling booths just reading through the literature on the walls. Yeah. They were reading the ballots very long. They were even discussing it with their partner or whatnot. So, I, I just wrote down how, um, because basically the last lecture, that's what we did, how long from the moment when they entered the booth to when they left. And that was about like 30 seconds on average. So, so Yeah, right. So, so this is a good example of operational definition too, Artyom. This question. How long does it take to process a voter? So, Some people counting from when the voter walks in the room to the time the voter puts the... This, this concludes talking to the, to the friends, uh, thinking, reading. Mm. And to me, it's how long does it take them to process this voter at the desk? That's what I'm looking at. Ah, That's okay. what I'm thinking. <laughs> so now we have That's to make some work on this. Now we have to work on this. Yeah. Because that's about 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. If it takes so, five yeah. minutes to process a voter at the desk, they would, we'd never be done. Right. But I was surprised, um, going back to the mobile thing real quickly, um, that was one thing that was worse uh, here than in the villages, I think just for practical reasons, because the villages, they have like a one-story building, you just slide in there, you can be on a wheelchair, even not a problem. Here, it's just a big city, and there are many, many more stairs. I was even shocked how inaccessible it was for so many of these stations. So they really need to do something in cities, I think. There, there are, accessibility in general is a problem here, and for elections, it's really a problem. Yeah. Well, we, I asked about uh, blind, whether they were uh, given anything. There was a, one case when a blind person did come, but, they came in with a family member into the booth and stood that that was acceptable. Um, I didn't see that myself, I was just told it by the observers. Uh, but the rest of them said that the blind people uh, vote at home. Right. Right. I mean, a blind person can receive assistance, but most of them probably vote by mobile. We were, we were at the... Um, the ninth, yeah, the ninth, which was a, a polling station which had a lot of military, um, the air, the air corps. So there were, I've got a picture of uh, lots of the soldiers, the, the, the cadets, uh, queuing up in and outside. At the, of at the, the military field. school. Yeah, I think it's the aviation school or something in. in oh, the aviation university. University institute, I think. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. There's like a military college or something in Podil near the yes. monastery. So yes. Okay, that's probably absolutely. where you were at. Um, but I actually also saw a lot of um, people, you know, most of the people in the voting booths, but they ended up being children. But it's just very difficult when you're just looking casually because, like, I mean, children, you know, they can be, you know, 14, 15, and you just see, like, this part of their leg. <laughs> then you see three different people, it's hard to just glance and say, no, everything's fine, you have to ask someone and, right. and trust them that they are, you know, really family and so on and so forth. One of them, one time it was kind of weird, it was like two older people, they went in together and then <laughs> I asked like, oh, what's happening here? And they say, oh, they're very old um, and they're helping each other. And we don't know which one is helping which one because they're both so old, <laughs> but it's fine, I guess. So they, you know. Yeah, it's not cheating. Yeah, but you just have to trust them that um, one of them, it was a husband and wife apparently, um, but trust them that one isn't telling the other one how to vote because you can't really verify that like easily unless you like listen to their conversations and so forth. Like, <laughs> Who should I vote for? But theoretically it could be, your husband could be saying like, vote here, you know, or else. So. Probably did. Uh, yeah. We opened in a clinic in Podil, and there were uh, 15 uh, possible voters, nine of which were patients and six of the medical profession. But they got 143 uh, ballots because that's the minimum. That's, that's, that's the minimum, that's, yeah. That's how many they pulled out of the safe, even though there were going to be maximum 15 people. And that was going to be a very easy count, but they couldn't go home. And they were joking that, you know, they're going to have to sit there. Once we saw the patients come in. There's a great picture of them behind the booth with their little slippers. Why did you choose there to open? 
Um, it was closest to where we start, ah. where we started, um, and it was the furthest away from that their particular deck. Furthest. Yeah, the, it was the furthest away from their deck. They they were sort of at the southern southeastern side, and the deck was at the northwestern side. So that's where we went for the far, the ones who had to travel the furthest. Ah. It makes sense to have a deck right in the centre and be surrounded by pecs, but they ju just didn't make any sense. What was it? Did you find that deck address? Okay, we good? Good. Uh, one more time, I'd like to thank everyone who participated. Thank Vika and our local staff, all the people who helped put this together. Uh, Andre Fute and Tamara Alexi for committing the UCCA to election observation. Um, Venezia. I have to look. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to go look on the list. I, I will. Uh, you you want to see if that form was submitted? Yeah. Uh, basically, thank you, and we're done. And he wants to see if his form was submitted. Yeah, you want to see if one's there, yeah? He was in Odessa. <laughs>